Hi guys. Okay, so this is the uh, video where I'm going to teach you um, what the decision matrix is for and how to use it. So I don't want you to think that the decision matrix is something that you need to use just when you're evaluating designs. You can use the decision matrix um, to make any to make any uh, decision that's challenging. So um, I use this decision matrix actually when my husband and I were buying a house. Um, we were buying our first, or uh, actually our second house, and but we were buying the house that we were going to live in probably for the rest of our lives, or that's what we thought. Um, so, and he, the real estate agent, showed us a couple of places, and we decided on two. We liked two homes, but he liked one home, and I liked the other one. And it was a really tough decision to make because it was expensive, and there was a lot of money involved, and things like that. So we wanted to make sure that we made the best decision and we wanted to make sure that we weren't including our emotions as part of the decision making process because that shouldn't be part of a good engineering design or a financial decision and things like that it should really be just about the 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 numbers involved and and does this design work for you and it really was about the design of the house um and not um and not the way it looked and things like that. And I was having a hard time um, not getting wrapped up in, in how I felt about how the house looked because one house needed a lot more work than the other. So anyway, you can see I've set up the decision matrix. Now the, the decision matrix um, in, instructions are, are up here at the top, right? So if you did like step one and then step two and step three, step four, um, you would end up with a, the same decision. Um, however, I'm just going to explain it to you. So what I did was, um, so I, I'm going to explain those decisions right now. So what I did was, um, here, um, we put the criteria for the house that we wanted that would work best for us and the things that were most important, we put those criteria in this top row here. So in this row here. Okay, so all along these purple boxes. So these purple boxes I filled in. And the most important things to us were the number of bedrooms, the number of bathrooms, was there a garage, how close is it to work, how close is it to school, and, and how big is the basement. And then and notice that I, we didn't really put in there how cute it was or how pretty it was from the outside because we uh, had a long talk and we decided that that's not what should, we should make the decision based on. So um, in this case, the number of bedrooms. So it, there wasn't a design that was designed by this was like, it was like house A and house B. So we were really just just trying to decide between house A and and house B. And house A was um, um, Mr. Kaplan's house that, that he wanted and house B was the house that I wanted. So I'm just going to put my, my name here. I'm not less important. I get bolded also. Okay. So in Mr. Kaplan's house, um, it had fewer bedrooms. So he actually, this house had much fewer bedrooms. It had, um, it only had three bedrooms, which was barely um, what we needed. So um, we gave that a score on a scale of one to four. We gave it a score of two. The other house had um, four bedrooms and a den. So we get the, the maximum score. We can't use a den really as a bedroom. Um, and then the number of bathrooms. Um, Mr. Kaplan's house, his house had, uh, I believe, two and a half full baths and um, this his that was that got a, a four, and then uh, the house that I wanted had one full bath and two half baths. So it got like a I think we gave that like a three because it was really about the number of toilets, right? You don't need to take four showers at once. Okay, did it have a garage? Now this is a yes or no question. So when you have this is a yes or no question. So when you have a yes or no question. You can't just like check or not check because how do you add up a check or a not check? You can't. You want to make a quantitative analysis of your design options. You don't want to go back to, you know, like yes or no. You want to know with a number value, how, I want to be able to add this up and the one with the highest score 
is the one that we're going to do or the one the house that we're going to buy. So if, with a yes or no question, you're just going to have a score of one or two. And if the answer to the question is no, the answer, the, it's going to get a lower score. And if the answer to the question is yes, it's going to have a higher score. Now, the house that I wanted did not have um, a garage. We would have had to build a garage. So my house got a uh, one, and the house his the house that he wanted had a two car garage, which we'd never had a two. We've never had we had never had a two car garage before. So um, okay, proximity to work. I definitely thought I was going to win here, okay? Because he uh, his house uh the house that he wanted was a full like 15 minutes further away and every and that's not with traffic and the house that i wanted was all like so close like you step over the road and we were in easton um so much closer to work so that one i got four i was sure i was gonna win uh proximity to school they were both the same proximity to school they were both on a cul-de-sac they both were backed up on the elementary school there so they both got a four here and his, you can start seeing like where, where are we gonna go here? Basement size, he got a four and the basement in this house was almost non-existent, so like one. Um, so we add up <laughs> the uh, point totals in each column. So we have two, six, and 18 here. And then we have seven, eight, 17. So this was a very close call. I actually think that there were some um, other criteria like the amount of taxes and uh, the size of the yard and things like that. Um, uh, we found out that the house that Mr. Kaplan wanted um, was, we didn't know this, it was actually very close to a lake association when they had a beach and swimming and stuff like that. So that just kind of like made the score go through the roof. And while I was looking at this, I realized, you know, the house that I wanted was not the better choice, um, even if it, though it was way cuter. <laughs> I needed less work. Um, 15 years later, I am really glad that I made the decision that we made, um, even though for uh, there were several years there where I wish that we had made the other decision because there, the house had so, needed so much work. But now that we're growing into the house, and my kids are, are bigger. So anyway, the reason I'm telling you this story is not because I want you to know about my house. I, that's not what this is about. This is about why you use the decision matrix and how to use the decision matrix. And I, hopefully I just showed you. Um, these criteria you should have listed in your design brief under the criteria and constraints box. If you don't have your criteria in the um, decision matrix, you can put them here, but then definitely list them again in your decision matrix. Okay. All right. So that's how you'd use a decision matrix. Um, and the, um, the design with the highest total is your best solution. And that's the one that you're going to build. Okay. Thank you.